Good morning, I'm Michael Whitehouse. It is April 28th, 2016. I've had a lot of coffee and feeling kind of wired this morning, so I feel like talking about politics. I don't usually talk about politics here on my YouTube channel, but uh, I'm gonna, because I want to. And that's a great thing on social media, I can talk about whatever I want. Um, anyone who knows me on Facebook knows which presidential candidate I support. Uh, that would be Bernie Sanders, because I've been, I've known known him, not personally, but known of him for nearly 20 years, and he hasn't wavered one bit from what he's believed in, and things he believes in are, are pretty solid, not really going to go into that, now, if, you, if you agree with me, great, if you don't agree with me, not important right now. I'm going to talk to you about what's going to happen next, so after the Acela primary, apparently that's what they call it on the radio, because there's five states that Acela goes through, um, and the primary that uh, Connecticut voted in. It is mathematically extremely unlikely that Sanders will get the nomination. Um, I mean, it could happen at the Superdelegates Hall swing, or California goes 90% to him, but uh, for both these things are not terribly likely unless something happens with the FBI and, and Clinton, so it is a possibility, but um, let's assume it doesn't, and there's no dramatic, ridiculous upsets. So that leaves us with two candidates for president most likely Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I am not a supporter of either, really, for two different reasons, but uh, believe it or not, I am mildly inclined to be less worried about Trump than Clinton. Wow, that sounds strange. Isn't Trump terrifying? He's going to start World War III and destroy the world? I don't think so, and I'm going to explain why in a moment. Um, first, let's talk about Clinton. So the thing about both Trump and Clinton is I don't believe what they're saying. I don't think Trump's going to build a wall and deport all the Mexicans and ban all the Muslims and do whatever else he's saying. And I don't think Clinton's going to, well, I don't believe anything she says, really, because um, she's such a politician that, and she's so transparently a politician that uh, her views are whichever way the wind blows. When she was running against Bernie, she's like, oh, yeah, I love $15 minimum wage. Oh, yeah, we got to support the workers. Sure. Sure, right. Yeah, as soon as I'm done uh, signing TPP, I'll be, uh, I'll be right back to, to talk about supporting workers. So, that, that's what you have with her, and it's whatever way the wind's blown. Two, two months from now, she'll be doing something else, but it's so transparent that people don't trust her to stand for one thing from one minute to the next, and all she wants is to be president. So she'll say whatever it takes to be president, and then once she's president, she'll probably just be paying back all the favors that she had to, to accumulate to become president. So what's she going to do once she gets there? Well, probably pay off favors, which means... Uh, to the big banks, the oil companies, all the people who gave her the money and the support to get her in there, and who knows who else. Um, so, probably not things that are in my interest. Trump, on the other hand, also will say whatever he has to say to become president. He wants to become president, but his motivation is different. Trump likes to win. I've also been following him for about 20 years, and um, he is a deal maker. He is a businessman. And people say, yeah, he, he's, he's, uh, he's declared bankruptcy four times. Well, if you'd started as many businesses as he had, you'd have declared bankruptcy 16 times. So, and I've also heard it said that if you took the amount of money he started with, given to him by his father, and you put it in a mutual fund for the amount of time since he inherited it, um, he'd have more money now than he does, you know, than, than he's actually earned, except for the fact that he's been living like Donald Trump all that time, too. So, he has everything that you would have earned in the stock market, or a mutual fund, plus living like Donald Trump, which means probably an additional, I don't know, $40 billion, $100 billion he spent in that time. Um, so Trump, you can't argue he's not a successful businessman. He lives in a skyscraper with his name on it. I mean, that's, he's either a successful businessman or a super villain. Um, you know, one of those two things. But, uh, but yeah, so, so the, the thing with, with him is that he likes to win and he's decently good at it business-wise. He knows how to negotiate. He knows how to make deals. Um, so winning in the primary looks like being a wackadoo and talking about walls and Muslims and, and, and just speaking off the cuff. That's how you get the far right wing base. That's how you win a Republican primary. Well, now the primary is ending and now he needs to win the general and now he's going to transform. He is going to shed his skin and become an entirely new Donald Trump. You already saw it with his, uh, foreign policy speech. You're going to see it more two months from now. The public will have completely forgotten about all the crazy things he said, and he will simply sound like a regular right-wing candidate 
Um, except that occasionally he'll still give you some some serious moments of uh, of sincerity, which will make him feel like a guy you can trust. I don't know what you trust him to do, but, you know, he, he passes the beer test, which is, can I see myself drinking a beer with that guy? Terrible way to choose a president, but unfortunately it's how we do it in America. It's why Bush beat Kerry. Um, and it's probably also why Obama beat Romney, besides the fact that Obama is just a better candidate. Uh, Trump certainly beats Clinton in the beer test. No one can imagine Clinton drinking a beer, let alone drinking a beer with them. So he's going to have a major advantage in that way. Now what's going to happen when he becomes president? Again, Trump likes to win. So he's going to s determine the parameters of what winning looks like. Uh, he's already said some of them. Getting more American jobs back. Making America great. What's that mean? Well, it means giving us more respect on the world stage, which, while I do like Obama, um, our ambivalence in so many important ways has certainly caused our allies to say, what are they for? What are, what are they going to do next? What's, what's happening? They knock over this dictator... You know, they go into Iraq to knock over Saddam Hussein, but they don't go into North Korea when North Korea is actually light enough nuclear weapons like a thrown 4th of July party. What's going on there? I think that Trump, with the help of his advisors, will create a cohesive foreign policy. It may be a cohesive foreign policy if you piss us off, we'll beat you up, but at least it'll be consistent. He'll beat up anyone who pisses us off. North Korea, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, uh, Mali, Madagascar, Antarctica whatever, and people will know where they stand, because he's going to say something, and then he's probably going to back it up. So, but at the same time, you know, when you're dealing with China, Russia, the countries that really could end the world with us, they understand what that looks like. They, they know what Trump is like. They know he's their kind of politician. They know you don't mess with that kind of guy, because he will push the button. Um, it creates a solid detente situation, and probably not World War III, I think. Um, so that, that's what we have. And then in, in Congress, as the Sanders campaign transitions away from presidency, it's going to move down ticket. We've got to start supporting the Bernie Krats. We're going to have something like in 2010 with the Tea Party, with a lot of Bernie supporting senators and congressmen. It's the first time ever Bernie Sanders in the Senate will have a lot of friends. Maybe not a majority, but certainly a decent chunk of them, enough to push through some legislation and change the agenda. So imagine this, imagine a Congress influenced by Bernie Sanders and people who, su who subscribe to his ideology, and Donald Trump is president. That doesn't sound as terrible as it could be. It has nothing to do with who I support or who I endorse, it's just what I see happening. I think, what's gonna get, I think it's what we're gonna get. I think things are gonna look a lot different in four years than they do now. And I don't think we'll have nuclear war between now and then. I think. I'm Michael Whitehouse. That'll do.